So I might have spawned some baby bettas in a bucket. Hello and welcome back to Creative Pet Keeping. My name is Kasha, I am your host. I make a lot of pet related videos specifically focused on my little fish room, breeding cichlids, bettas, and other little critters and sharing my knowledge and the beautiful adventures that I encounter with my fish. So subscribe if you already haven't and let's start talking about baby bettas because this is such a long awaited video. Everyone wants to see baby bettas. So let's jump right into it and take a look inside of the bucket. The setup is pretty simple here. The male and the female were starting to spawn. The male had a little bit of a small bubbleness, but that's totally okay. The setup itself just included some Indian almond leaves, a life plant. I put a heater in there as well as a filter, a sponge filter that was unplugged as to not disturb them. And I use a little bit of bubble wrap to support his little tiny nest. He's not the best nest builder, but he did his best. After the male and female finished spawning, I removed the female and let the male guard the eggs for three days. After three days though, they all hatched and look at all these little tiny babies. I was actually not aware how many there were because I couldn't really see all of them in the bucket, but there was quite a bit. And the crazy part is this is the first spawn where I actually didn't feed live food for the first three days. I let them feed off of all the little microorganisms that were in the filter sponge as well as populated the Indian almond leaves. And they actually did really well and I didn't have any die offs, which was a very big surprise. After about three days, the fry get big enough to start eating larger foods. So I was able to finally feed them some baby brine shrimp, which is a wonderful, wonderful food to feed your baby bettas because it is very, very nutrient uh, rich. And you know, live foods are the best way to go. Some people try to feed egg yolks or uh, powders, but baby bettas might not take to that and might not really eat that very well. So here I'm kind of spreading it around so it's on all different sides and I let the babies kind of figure it out. One tip that I have is at the beginning, uh, baby bettas do better if you feed them more often and give them smaller meals. If you give them access to all they can eat when they're really tiny, they will eat till they're almost kind of exploding and their tummies will push on their swim bladder, which may cause some swim bladder development issues. So just be mindful of that. So because these guys were bred in a bucket, I've been kind of really tempted to call them the bucket babies so that we don't have to refer to this as the uh, 2020 beta series, but that sounds kind of odd to me. So let me know what you think down in the comments below. Should I call them the bucket babies or should I call them something better? I'm pretty sure you guys will come up with something better because you have pretty good ideas. Let me know in the comments down below. As the days started to progress, I slowly started to fill up the bucket with more and more clean, but also aged water. So water that was left to kind of gas off and sit for about 24 hours, just so they can have a little bit more water volume. And as you can see, they were growing so quickly. There's already some small changes in their growth. I am going to be moving the babies into the grow out tank. So I have some water up here. I didn't fill it up a lot, but this water has been in here since last night. So it's had like at least, I think I would say 16 to 18, 18 hours. And I've been kind of running a little airline just to kind of get some of the bubbles out. But what we're going to be doing is I'm going to put a heater in here for the next, I don't know, 30 minutes or so just to start to warm up the water to the correct temperature. Then I'm gonna move over the heater. I mean, not the heater, but the uh, the filter that's in here. And we're gonna slowly pour in these guys into here and kind of mix their old water with a little bit of new water. Don't wanna really shock them or anything. It's not gonna be a whole lot, but we're gonna make this nice and slow and gentle for them. So here is what the tank looked like before I ended up adding the little baby bettas. I ended up adding tannins to the water, which changed the color, but it adds a lot of beneficial properties for the little babies. I ended up putting in the heater, some plants, some life plants. So I have floating ones as well as some moss. I have some Indian almond leaves, some large chola wood. All of these things are not necessarily necessary, but I think they really help create this little ecosystem that will better support the little babies. And I think they like it. 
I put the filter in here. The water will kind of go up to that level as I fill it up with the old bucket of old water. So it will kind of go up there, but I put the bucket up here so I can easily access it. And now that there's no bubbler in here, look at all these babies. And they're all doing really well. Oh my gosh, this might be potentially my biggest spawn yet. Have I seen other people have bigger spawns? Yes, I've never had one this big, so that's kind of exciting, but terrifying at the same time, but I'm ready. Pretty much what I'm doing is gently scooping them up. Got some babies in here. And then I just kind of gently pour them in here and I'm double checking if there aren't any stuck. And I'm just going to keep gently scooping the babies and transferring them over. This footage is from a few days later after they've been kind of acclimated and adjusted to their new tank and they're doing really well. They were growing quite quickly every day and I started to increase the amount of food that they were eating. So they were eating baby brine shrimp in larger quantities as I really wanted to make sure that all of them get enough to eat when you have such a big spawn what can happen is you can have some of the bigger ones that will eat majority of the food and then they won't leave any for the smaller runty ones which is why eventually people sometimes um will separate their spawn based on two sizes so at a certain age they will separate the larger ones from the little tiny ones and this gives the tiny ones a good chance to kind of catch up as usually you will probably have uh, different sizes of fish in one spawn that just seems to be a better thing thing thing. I can't words. My goodness. Uh, I did notice that when I breed cichlids, on the other hand, the cichlids don't have this issue. I'm seeing a lot more uniform growth, but the spawns are a lot smaller versus the beta spawn. So it's very interesting to observe different fish species and they all have different growth rates and different uh, rates of development. Their bodies all share similarities, but they're quite different. And I have a couple of videos on my channel that will show you the growth, um, kind of the adventures of how fry developed. You can check out a couple different cichlids. You can check out my beta playlist. There's really a lot to kind of choose from and it's really fun to get this, get this up close and personal look. So this is the most current footage of these babies that was shot a few days ago and they're getting quite big. And at this point, the tank is filled all the way up. And yeah, you can really see how many there are. This is definitely a very big spawn, but I am super, super excited to have so many little babies to raise and I'm very excited to take you along on this journey as we watch them grow up and see what they develop into. So thank you for watching my video. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel so you don't miss out on more adorable baby beta updates as well as updates on all of my other fish. I have other spawns going on and other tutorials I will be working on. So if you don't want to miss out on them, be sure to click not only the subscribe button, but also ring the little notification bell so that you may become notified. And if you want, be sure to check out all my previous series. They're a lot of fun. I have some older ones, but especially if you want to see my very first one where I bred bettas for the very first time. I was a complete newbie, although I did research as much as possible and prepare myself. It's, it's a fun one to check out. So I will be linking that right here in the cards. And with that being said, I will see you in the next video. And I hope you have an awesome day. Bye.